Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number 8. Maswimi Max, a well-known actress and model celebrated for her work with major publications like Playboy and Maxim, has passed away at the age of 45. Max was found in her Las Vegas area home early in the morning on January 25th. Law enforcement sources indicated that no foul play is suspected, though a full investigation will be conducted to determine the circumstances of her death. Max's modeling career began in 2000, and over the years she graced the pages of various publications including Maxim, Alt Magazine, and Bizarre Magazine. She was also a familiar face in Playboy, having posed for the magazine and attending events at the Playboy Mansion in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Apart from her modeling career, Max had acting roles, predominantly in B-movies such as Cornman American Vegetable Hero and Giantess Battle Attack. She also appeared in an uncredited role in SXXX State of the Union, featuring Samuel L. Jackson and Ice Cube. In recent years, Max had shifted her focus to alternative modeling, often participating in horror and cabaret shows, as well as producing content for YouTube. She cultivated a significant online presence, amassing over 300,000 followers on Instagram who admired her unique style and persona. Masuimi Max's passing is a loss to the modeling and entertainment community, leaving behind a legacy of boldness and creativity in the industry. Number 7. N. Scott Momaday, the Pulitzer Prize-winning Native American author and a pivotal figure in modern literature, passed away at the age of 89 at his home in Santa Fe, New Mexico. His death, announced by HarperCollins, marked the end of a luminary career that was instrumental in ushering Native American literature into the mainstream. Born in Lawton, Oklahoma, on February 27, 1934, Momaday was raised among the Kiowa and later at the Jemez Pueblo in New Mexico. His unique cultural background profoundly influenced his literary work, which often explored themes of identity, tradition, and the sacredness of words. Momaday's groundbreaking novel House Made of Dawn, which won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1969, is celebrated for its innovative narrative style and its exploration of the Native American experience. The novel's protagonist, Abel, is a World War II veteran struggling with his identity and cultural dislocation. This seminal work, with its complex narrative structure and evocative language, is credited with inspiring a wave of Native American literature. His literary prowess extended beyond fiction to poetry, memoirs, and essays. Mamaday's work is characterized by its lyrical prose and deep reverence for the landscape, often interweaving his Kiowa heritage with broader themes of self-definition and the oral tradition. In addition to House Made of Dawn, Mamaday's notable works include The Way to Rainy Mountain and The Name's a Memoir. These works combine personal recollection, Kiowa folklore, and history, showcasing his commitment to preserving and reimagining indigenous narratives. Mamaday's influence reached beyond the literary world. He held teaching positions at several universities and was an advocate for Native American culture and arts. His contributions to literature and culture earned him numerous accolades, including the National Medal of Arts. Number 6. Amanda Davies, daughter of legendary soap opera actress Erica Slezak and noted for her role as young Vicky Lord on ABC's One Life to Live, died unexpectedly at the age of 42. The entertainment industry is in sorrow, while the date and cause of her death remain unknown. Erica Slezak's official fan site released a statement expressing the family's profound sadness and requesting privacy during this trying time. Slezak's representative verified the devastating news to The Hollywood Reporter. Amanda's big acting debut came in 2002, when she played a younger version of her mother's legendary character, Victoria Vicky Lord, in flashback scenes on One Life to Live. In 2011, she also participated in the short film, The Gift. 
Amanda was born into a family with deep roots in the performing arts, including her father, actor Brian Davies, who has appeared in American Gigolo and The Age of Innocence, as well as her Tony-winning Viennese character actor grandfather Walter Slezak and great-grandfather, Austrian opera star Leo Slezak. Amanda's mother, Erica Slezak, is well known for her role as Vicky Lord on One Life to Live, which she has portrayed since 1971, garnering a record six daytime Emmys. Amanda Davies's death has had a major impact on the entertainment industry, with figures such as television journalist Michael Fairman expressing their sympathies online. Amanda is survived by her parents, Erica and Brian, as well as her 44-year-old brother, Michael Davies. Her premature demise has created a vacuum in the hearts of her family, friends, and admirers. Number 5. David Soule, best remembered for his role as Detective Kenneth Hutch Hutchinson on the legendary 1970s TV series Starsky and Hutch, died at the age of 80. His wife, Helen Snell, said he died after a courageous fight for life in the loving company of family. Soul's portrayal of Hutch with Paul Michael Glazer in Starsky and Hutch from 1975 to 1979 established the series as a generational touchstone, recognized for its buddy cop dynamic, exhilarating action, and iconic red 1976 Ford Gran Torino. Aside from Starsky and Hutch, Soul played key roles in other television shows such as Here Come the Brides and the 1973 Dirty Harry sequel Magnum Force. Soul was born in Chicago on August 28, 1943, and began his career as a theater actor in the mid-1960s with early performances on The Merv Griffin Show and Star Trek. Clint Eastwood was impressed by his acting abilities, which led to his casting in Magnum Force and later in Starsky and Hutch. In addition to acting, Soul had a successful singing career. His 1977 single, Don't Give Up On Us, peaked at number one in both the United States and the United Kingdom. He also had several UK hits, including Silver Lady. Soul later became a British citizen and participated in British detective shows such as Poirot, Dalziel and Pasco, and Lewis. Known for his captivating personality both on and off television, he maintained contact with his admirers, delivering a contemplative Christmas message on social media just weeks before his death. David Soule was survived by his wife and six children. His history as an actor and singer is distinguished by unforgettable performances and a strong connection with his audience. Number 4. Sarah Rice, who played Johanna in Stephen Sondheim's first Broadway production of Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, died at the age of 68 due to cancer. Rebecca Kane, a fellow performer and friend, revealed her death via an emotional Instagram post. Rice's depiction of Johanna in the 1979 Broadway play was her last Broadway performance, but it left an indelible imprint on the theater community. She returned to her Hallmark song, Green Finch and Linnet Bird, two years ago at the Sondheim Unplugged concert in New York's 54 Below, demonstrating her enduring connection to the part. Rice was born on March 5, 1955, in Okinawa, Japan, and traveled to New York at the age of 18 with the goal of pursuing a theater career. Her Broadway career began with off-off Broadway plays, where she played Marianne in Hang On To Your Ribbons and The Girl in The Fantastics. Her pre-Broadway credits included A Little Night Music, Candide, The Tempest, and The Sound of Music. Rice also performed as a soprano with major opera companies such as the Santa Fe Opera and Gran Teatro La Fenice in Venice. She was also a well-known figure in New York's cabaret scene, where she received a Bistro Award in 2010 and a Mac Award in 2011. Rice, an outstanding theremin musician, has performed at locations such as the Caramore Music Festival. Rice, a longtime New York City resident, continued to live there with the same piano as when she first came, always giving a home for her pet kitties. She married her producer, John Hiller. Information regarding other surviving was not immediately available. Sarah Rice's influence on Broadway, as well as her love of music and animals, will be remembered lovingly by everyone who knew her. Number 3. Lynn Marta, a well-known actress who appeared in the TV series Love, American Style, and the 1984 picture Footloose, died at the age of 78. She died from cancer in Los Angeles. 
Her friend Joan Sobel described her as a beautiful light. Admiring her abilities as an actress and singer, Marta's acting career lasted over four decades, beginning in 1966 with roles on shows such as Gidget and The Monkees. She remained a constant presence on television until her 2004 part in American Dreams, and she appeared in 24 episodes of Days of Our Lives from 1983 to 2003. Her versatility as an actress was evident in her wide range of guest appearances on popular TV shows from the 1960s to the 1990s, including Then Came Bronson, Cannon, Mod Squad, The FBI, Gunsmoke, Kojak, The Streets of San Francisco, Chips, Designing Women, Law and & Order, The Young and the Restless, Crossing Jordan, and ER. During the span of Starsky and Hutch, she featured in four episodes and was romantically linked to co-star David Soul. Marta was also a member of the Love American Style Players, a troupe of regulars in the 1969-74 comedic anthology series. Her cinematic credits include a role in Clint Eastwood's 1972 western Joe Kidd and as the gossip-mongering Aunt Lulu Warnicker in Footloose. Marta also became a part of a terrible Hollywood history when she gave vital eyewitness testimony in the murder trial of My Sister Sam, actress Rebecca Schaefer, who was fatally shot by a stalker. Lynn Marta is survived by her sister, her contributions to television and movies, as well as her outstanding performances, will have a long-lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Number 2. Tom Shales, the renowned Pulitzer Prize-winning television critic for The Washington Post, died at the age of 79. According to his caretaker, Victor Herforth, his death was caused by COVID-related complications and renal failure. Beginning in 1977, Shales was The Post's leading TV critic, and his pieces garnered national notice and great impact, being widely syndicated. Shales was well known for covering a wide range of television genres, including nature documentaries, late-night chat shows, network sitcoms, and cable dramas. His astute criticisms and advocacy for high-quality television gained him a recognized reputation in the world of journalism. Shales was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Criticism in 1988, making him the fourth TV critic to achieve this distinguished accolade. He was a prominent early booster of cable television, seeing its potential impact on the entertainment business. Shales' accomplishments extended beyond his tenure at the Washington Post. He also wrote on movies and television for Television Week, the Huffington Post, and Roger Ebert's website. His significant publications include Live from New York, An Uncensored History of Saturday Night Live, and Those Guys Have All the Fun, Inside the World of ESPN, both of which were co-authored as oral histories with journalist James Andrew Miller. Tom Shales leaves a legacy as a keen reviewer and a supporter of television as an important cultural medium. He has no immediate survivors. Number 1. Joyce Randolph, beloved for her role as Trixie Norton on the classic television show The Honeymooners, passed away at her New York City home. She was 99 years old and in hospice care at the time of her death from natural causes. Randolph's portrayal of Trixie, the wife of sewer worker Ed Norton and neighbor to Ralph and Alice Cramden, Jackie Gleason and Audrey Meadows, left an indelible mark on television history. She was chosen for the role by Gleason himself after he saw her in a chewing gum commercial. In a 1999 interview, Randolph described Trixie as a housewife with possible past ties to burlesque, adding depth to her character in the sitcom's narrative. The Honeymooners originally aired its lone season in 1955-56 and finished at number 19 in a three-network universe. Despite its modest beginnings, the show's classic 39 CBS episodes have remained a staple in syndication, endearing it to multiple generations of fans. Randolph was the last surviving member of the show's main cast, a group still revered as icons of television history. The Honeymooners debuted in 1951 as a sketch on DuPont Network's Calvacate of Stars before moving to the Jackie Gleason show on CBS. Her career began in 1946 on the experimental station WRGB in Schenectady, NYI. Post The Honeymooners, Randolph appeared in shows like The Doctors and the Nurses, Hi Honey, I'm Home, and Everything's Jake, 
Survived by her son, Randy, Randolph's passing marks the end of an era in television comedy. Randy has requested donations to the Entertainment Community Fund in lieu of flowers, honoring her legacy in the entertainment industry.